Okay, this video is going to go over Unit 5, which is talking about um, decimals, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with decimals, um, which was reviewed from 6th grade math this year. So, first one. Again, make sure you don't use a calculator on this one especially, because this one is helping you practice without a calculator, and on the end of your testing, you can't use a calculator. So it says a woodworker wants to cut a board that is 8.125 feet long. So let's say we have this and the whole thing is 8.125 feet long into five equal size pieces. And we want to know how long is each piece. So we're taking this and we're splitting it into five or in other words we're dividing it by five. So if we're cutting usually that means like subtraction or division. If we're cutting it into equal size pieces that means we're dividing. Okay so we're taking 8.125 and we're dividing it by five, and we're seeing how much is one. So we keep our decimal right here. Since the number we're dividing by doesn't have a decimal, we just don't need to move the decimal point. So we're just dividing by five. Five goes into eight one time. One times five is five. Eight minus five is three. Then we bring up the decimal, and then we bring down the next digit. Five goes into 31 six times. So we put the six right above that two. Um, oh, sorry, right above that one. Let me put it a little bigger so we can see it a little better. I'm just spacing it out so I have the numbers over the right spot. 6 times 5 is 30. 31 minus 30 is 1. Then I bring down the next digit, 2. 5 goes into 12 2 times. 2 times 5 is 10. 12 minus 10 is 2. Now I bring down my last digit. 5 goes into 25 5 times, so I put the 5 right above that 5. 5 times 5 is 25, and I've used all of my digits, um, so my answer would be 1.625. My quotient is 1.625. This is multiple choice, so obviously you could just guess and check, but please show your work, write down your work on a scratch paper, and so, we can, so you can remember how to do these problems on your own. Okay, question two, after you try it on your own, select all of the expressions that have the same value as 764 divided by six. So this one I don't even need to solve, okay? Uh, rule with when we're dividing, with when we're dividing, if, I, if this is the decimal point for both of the numbers, if I move them both to the right one time, they're gonna have the same answer. If I move them both to the left two times, those have the same answer. So if we move the decimal point for both the dividend and the divisor, so this is our dividend and our divisor, the same number of times, then the quotient is going to be the same. So this one is, so if this was 764 right here, I moved the decimal to the right one time. If this was 6, I moved the decimal to the right one time. Since I moved them both to the right one time, or in other words, times both the dividend and the divisor by 10, it's gonna have the same answer as this, okay? Here's 764, the decimal was not moved. 10 is a different number, so if I'm dividing by a different number, it will not have the same value. Um, this one, so if I started at 764, I moved the decimal to the left one time. If I started at six, I moved the decimal to the left two times. So these are moved a different number of times, so they will not have the same value as this one or this one. Okay, so if I started with 764, I moved the decimal to the left two times to get this value. If I started at 6, I moved the decimal to the left one time. So this was moved two times, this was moved one time, so they're not the same answer or quotient. Okay, if this is 764, I moved the decimal one, two, three times to the left. If this is six, I move the decimal one, two, three times to the left. Since they're moved the same number of times in the same direction, it will have the same quotient as this one. So those two will work, but not any of the other ones. Pay attention, the order may be different because um, it may shuffle the answer options. Question three. One way to convert from inches to centimeters is to multiply the number of inches by 2.54. So we would multiply the inches by 2.54. So how many centimeters are in 0 0.25 inches? It literally tells us. So we take the centimeters and multiply it by 2.54, or take the inches and multiply it by 2.54. So I'm gonna take 0 
and I'm going to multiply that by 2.54. Before I start multiplying, I'm going to count how many numbers are after the decimal point. So one, two numbers, one, three, four numbers. So in total, one, two, three, four numbers are after the decimal point. Then I can erase the decimals and just multiply them as whole numbers. So I'm going to multiply it as 254 times 25, and then I'll place my decimal back at the end. So 5 times 4 is 20, 5 times 5 is 25, plus 2 is 27, 5 times 2 is 10, 10 plus 2 is 12, okay, now I'm going to erase this part, add a 0 for the missing place value, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, then I add these guys, 0, um, 7 plus 8 is 15, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 5 is 6. I place my decimal back 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So it's 0 0.6350, or in other words, 0 0.6350. There's four numbers after my decimal. This last zero doesn't need to be there, so technically you could just write it as um, 0 0.635, but 0 0.6350 works as well. Okay, so that's us multiplying with decimals. Okay, question four. Find the quotient. Quotient is just the answer to a division problem. Okay, so I'm doing 2,247. The number we divide by goes on the outside, the divisor. Seven goes into two, no times. Seven goes into 22, three times. Three times seven is 21. Subtract and we get 1, bring down the 4, 7 goes into 14 2 times, 2 times 7 is 14, subtract and we get 0, we bring down the last digit, 7 goes into 7 1 time, 1 times 7 is 7, so my quotient is 321. If there was a decimal in here, like let's say it was here, then we would bring it up, so 321 point something, but since there's no remainder, we didn't have, have to add a point zero. so it's just 321. Nice and easy. Okay, next one. Find the quotient. Um, we have 676 divided by 15. This one you may not know your 13s. So one idea is to just kind of count by 13s on the side. So you have um, like some multiplication facts of 13 to go off of. Of course, when you're taking the rise test or end of your test, you won't have this here, but it's a good place to start. Okay. Um, so I'll just do that many for now. So 13 doesn't go into 6. 13 goes into 67. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. 5 times 13 is 65. So then I subtract. 7 minus 5 is 2. Bring down the 6. 13 goes into 26, two times. Two times 13 is 26. So this one's nice and easy. The, the, the decimal is after here, so we don't need to bring it up. So just 52, 52 holes. Okay, question six. So a sign in a bakery gives these options. 12 cups for $29, 24 cups for 56, and 50 cups for 129. Find each unit price. So unit price is the price for one, and then we're gonna see which one is the best deal, okay? So let's do this, this is a multi-step question. So first I'm gonna find the unit price of each of them. So to find the unit price is you take the money, take the money and divide by the number of cupcakes. Always start with the money and you divide by how many things you bought with the money. So 29 divided by 12. 12 doesn't go into 2, 12 goes into 29 2 times, 2 times 12 is 24, subtract 9 minus 4 is 5. So I have a remainder, so I need to add a point zero. I bring up the decimal, and I bring down the zero. 12 goes into 50, 12, 24, 36, 48, 4 times, 4 times 12 is 48, I subtract and I get 2. Then I add a zero. 12 goes into 20 just one time. One times 12 is 12. 
20 minus 12 is 8. Then I'm going to add a 0, bring it down. 12 goes into 80. 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72. So 6 times. 6 times 12 is 72. Okay, so I can stop there. So, so far I know it's 2.416. So I could keep going um, and I would get a long decimal. But since it's money, since it's the unit price, I know it's 2.416. I can only have two numbers after the decimal for money. So I just take the third digit and I use that to round my hundredths place. So the six makes this one round up. So it should be $2.42, okay? And I don't need to keep going because I just have to round to the um, hundredths spot. So just $2.42 for 12 cups, for 12 cupcakes. Okay. Make sure you know how to do division and how to round it with money. Um, so this one, 24 cupcakes. So $56 divided by 24 cupcakes will tell me how much for one. So 56 divided by 24. Okay, 24 doesn't go into five. 24 must go into 56 two times because 24, 48. Okay, so two times. Two times 24 is 48. I'm going to subtract. 16 minus 8 is 8. Then I'm going to do a point zero. I bring up the decimal, bring down the zero. I'm going to think, okay, I'm guessing it's going to go into it three times. So let's see. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. So yeah, it must be 3 times. 3 times 24 is 72. When I subtract 80 minus 72, I get 8. Then I add a 0, bring it down. Again, 24 goes into 80. It's the same thing, 3 times. 3 times 24 is 72. Subtracting at 8. Add a 0, bring it down. 24 goes into 80 3 times. 3 times um, 24 is 72. And I'm seeing this pattern is, con is going to continue. So it's 2.333333333 for infinity. When we are talking about money, we need to round to two numbers after the decimal. So the third number helps me round. So I take that third number, and does this three make me round up to four or stay the same at three? And since it's um, below five, then it's gonna make me stay the same. So it's just gonna be $2.33 for one. So this one's cheaper so far. This one's cheaper than this one. Okay. Now I'm going to do this last unit price one. And again, this is not a calculator problem. This is one you have to do by hand. So make sure you're showing all your work. So we have money, 129 divided by 50. So $129 divided by 50. 50 doesn't go into 1. It doesn't go into 12. It does go into 129. 50, 100. So 2 times, 2 times 50 is 100. I subtract and I get 29. Then I add a point zero. I bring up the decimal. I bring down the zero. 50 goes into 290. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. Then it would be 300. So just five, five times. Five times 50 is 250. Then I subtract. Okay. So I have a remainder. I add a zero, bring it down. 50 goes into 400 eight times, because five, five times four, um, <laughs> sorry, five times eight is 40. So 50 times, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, so 50 times eight would be 400, okay? And you can always do 400 divided by 50 to f figure out what that is in your figure tips. Okay, so eight times, eight times 50 is 400. So $2.58 for this one. Which option gives the lowest unit price? So is it the 12 cupcake, 24 cupcake, or 50? Um, and it would be the 24 cupcake option. So the 24 cupcake option, because that one's the cheapest unit price. Okay, that was a long one. So last one. A stack of 500 pieces of paper is 1.875 inches tall. How thick is each piece of paper? Okay, so we have a stack. Let's 
let's do a table for this one just in case we get mixed up. So we have paper and we have inches. So we know 500 pieces of paper is 1.875 inches tall. And we're trying to find out how thick is each piece of paper. Each means one, okay? So how much is one? And I know I take 500 and divide it by 500 to find out how much one is. 500 divided by 500 is one. So that means I'm gonna divide 1.875 by 500. So 1.875 divided by 500, the order matters. So be careful on this one. We're just trying to see how much is one tiny sheet of paper. So it's gonna be a really small decimal number. So 500 goes into one zero times, bring up the decimal. 500 goes into 18, zero times. 500 goes into 187, zero times. Okay, 500 goes into 1,875. 500, 1,000, 1,500, so three times. And this is 1,500. And they can subtract. Eight minus five is three. Okay, so I have a remainder, so I have to add a point. Oh, actually, I don't add a point zero. There's already a decimal here. So I just add a zero. This doesn't change the value, but it's a value I can bring down to find out how many times 500 fits in it. So think, how many times does five go into 37 to start off with? Five times seven is 35. So let's see here, 500, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500. So seven times. Okay, and I subtract. I get 250, so then I need to add one more zero. 500 goes into 2,500, so think five goes into 25 five times. So 500, 500 times five is 2,500. So I'm gonna put five here, and then I get 2,500. And now I have no more remainder and I've used all my digits. So one sheet of paper would be 0 0.00375. 0 0.00375 and we would write inches okay but we're just you can just write the value as well so thank you for watching the video if you needed help and have a good day